Hey guys, in this video, we are going to be talking about developer entitlement and what exactly that is. All right, guys, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Hey guys, this video is brought to you by CodingPhase.com, the number one place to learn how to code to not waste your time. Go check it out, get the projects that you need for your portfolio, learn everything that you need to get a job, and at the same time, be able to learn how to make money online with the skills that you are already getting right now as a developer. Go check it out, CodingPhase.com, links is below. Crazy discount when you click on the link. So yeah, check it out. So what exactly is developer entitlement? Developer entitlement is when somebody feels they are owed something. They feel like just because they know how to build a little application, they know a little bit of HTML, CSS, they know how to build a to-do app and every framework that's out there, they feel like they are entitled to $100,000 or more. Why? Because they see stories online where you see guys coming out of nowhere and be like, hey, my first job was $100,000. Hey, I'm working for this great startup. Hey, I'm working for Google now. And I just showed up, you know, with three months of uh, basically experience from a boot camp. And now I'm working at Google. I'm working at Facebook. I'm working at this, this, and that. Right? So the guys that's watching this through the screen, they feel like, you know what, man? I deserve that too, I should be getting that, okay? But what they don't understand is a whole bunch of different factors that go into it. Nobody owes you anything. You have to earn it, okay? Just because you say, I deserve to get $100,000 and more, doesn't mean a company needs to give you that. If they feel like you're not ready or your skills are not worth that, you're not gonna get paid that, okay? That's just how it is, it's, it's plain simple. So let's say, for example, I see a lot of people that come in with this idea that they want a higher salary, but what they don't understand is that 99% of you guys that are watching this, you have to start from the bottom. Meaning, you might even have to go do an internship without getting paid. You might even have to go work at a digital agency or a local little digital agency that does SEO and, and, and web design and this, this, and that for local companies. Some of you guys think like, oh, this is, oh, this is beneath me. I'm supposed to be getting Google money. You know what I mean? <laughs> like people think like, yo, I need to be getting Google money for everything that I do. Nah, 99% of you guys have to work yourself up. I'm a guy that worked myself up. My first job was $13 an hour. And it wasn't even web developer, right? My title was literally content editor, product editor. That's it. My job was to edit, you know, different posts on eBay, uh, create the HTML, CSS for the eBay listings. That's it. That was my whole thing, guys. That's it. That was my first job, $13 an hour. Two months later, I was out of there. I started applying to other places, but you know what was good about having that first job? Was that it gave me a stamp. The next company wasn't worried about, hey, is this guy gonna break our code? Is this guy even proven that he can actually uh, code or can other companies even hire him, right? Like, we don't wanna be the first one trusting this guy, right? 99% of you guys are gonna be in the same situation as me. Right? If you are a self-taught developer, even if you are a college graduate, even if you are a boot camp graduate, you are in the same position that I was in when I first started. Right? It is what it is, guys. You just have to be realistic. It's like for us, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just a regular dude. You're probably just a regular dude, a regular girl out here in this world, right? When was the last time that you won $100,000 in you know, playing the, the scratch off or playing the lottery? Right? When was the last time that you went to a casino and broke the casino? You're like, damn, I broke the casino. I got $50,000 out of the casino. Right? It doesn't happen to everybody. It happens, but it doesn't happen to everybody. And that's just how it is in the tech industry. Okay? Your first job is not going to be this amazing job that you think. Right? Most likely, it's going to be a small company that's giving you the opportunity. Sometimes you might just even get an internship that might not even be a paying internship. But what does that do for you? It gives you a stamp on your resume that says, this person has worked at a company and has been able to work with this company and touch their code, okay? Because most companies, what they're scared of is that you're gonna touch their code and you're gonna break things. Senior developers don't even wanna have junior developers in because they're scared 
that the work that they already put in, somehow they're gonna mess it up, okay? So by you going to a smaller company and getting these opportunities, right, and, and being able to work at a company maybe at a lower salary, maybe $50,000, $60,000, right, you might be able to just learn everything that you need so then you could go to a higher company, a bigger company, and, and, and really go in there and, and do what you got to do. It is what it is, guys. You just have to be realistic. Okay, I know some of you guys are coming from other careers where, you know, somebody sent me a, a message like, yo, you know, I'm an IT worker, you know, I've been doing this for like 10 years, you know, and I'm already getting like 75,000, you know, in, in my company, you know, how can I get a mid to senior level position? Bro, it doesn't work like that, right? You're not gonna get a mid level to senior level position straight off the jump, nah. You need to prove yourself out here. You know, you need to do at least a, a year where you could say, okay, now I'm nice. And then from there, I'm going to start getting this, this other positions that might pay me higher or even pay you the same thing that you was making as an IT. You got to remember, you are switching careers, right? People think, yes, I got experience in other fields are sort of related to development. But it's not development. A company is going to look at you like, does this guy even know how to work in a team? Does he even know how to do Git? Does he even know how to freaking go in there and, and look at our file structures and find his way through the code? Does he even know how to do that? Can he even transfer a website from a different hosting provider to another one? Can he go into, uh, you know, SSH in? Can, you, you get what I'm saying? Like the basics, most people can't even trust you to do that if you've never done it in a professional environment, okay? So it's not that I want to shut you guys down or, or, or just be like negative because I'm not being negative. I'm just being realistic with you guys. I want you guys to have this uh, sense of reality that this is just another job, just like anything else in the world, right? You can't show up to McDonald's. I'm just breaking it down to McDonald's, right? This is just a, a very, you know, simple uh, analogy for you guys to understand. You can go to McDonald's, right, today, and almost impossible, it's almost impossible for you to say, hey, man, you know what, I'm not doing fries today. I'm the manager. You can't just show up like that, bro. You got to start somewhere. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. It's the same thing as a junior developer. You got to come in somewhere. You got to start from the bottom. You might just have to go in there and do the things that the senior developer doesn't even want to do, right? You might have to just be the guy on call calling GoDaddy for two hours while the senior developer is actually doing some work. And you're like, damn, I got to be on the phone. Yeah, you got to put in the work. Okay, some of you guys want to be getting the cool jobs right away. Y'all want to get paid right away just because you busted your ass for three months and, and you're thinking, well, that's it. I did my little websites or, you know, I did my little web applications. I got a couple of JavaScript calculators and I did a to-do app in every framework that's out here, right? <laughs> like, people think like they are entitled to this type of money. Bro, it doesn't work like that. Life is not perfect. Always remember that. Life is not perfect. I wish it was perfect, but it's not. Okay? Instead of you saying, hey, I want $70,000 on my first job, say 50. Take 50 just for it. Go in three months later, six months later, apply somewhere else, and I guarantee you, you're almost going to double your money. That's just how it is. It's part of the industry. You have to build skills. You have to build, it's, it's like a resume, right? It's like a portfolio. You got to build that, that solid foundation before a company hires you. Now, that's not saying that it doesn't happen. Once again, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen that you see guys that pop up and be like, well, I'm at Google now. Hey, I'm at whatever, Facebook. I'm at Amazon. I'm, a, I'm in the fang right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it does happen. But then you got to understand, like, Look back at, at what what made them get into that, right? A lot of these guys are showing up with like crazy university degrees, right? I'm talking about guys going to MIT, guys going to Stanford, guys going to uh, you know <laughs> NYU. You see guys showing up with like a crazy resume already from you know a, a, a huge university. You can't compete with somebody with with that background, and, and they're like, yo. You got to remember, there's a journey for that person. That person didn't get there just because he just got there. He said, let me apply. That person's basically been on a journey since junior high school. 
This is something that people forget. You just started yesterday. You just started learning how to code yesterday. There's guys that have been doing this since like junior high school, right? There's guys that have been getting this foundation and putting in that work. And those companies, they look at that and they say, you know what? This could be somebody that, it could be somebody that's brilliant. Somebody that could be a really good asset. We're gonna invest into them. A lot of these companies, they have that budget to say, you know what? This kid was a prodigy from junior high school to high school. Now he studied computer science, right? Now he has a solid foundation of uh, computer science and, and, and you know, uh, engineering in general. And then now we're gonna basically train him. Cause a lot of guys that get hired on this internships from Google, Facebook, and all these companies, those guys are not even amazing developers. I'm just being honest with you guys. Those guys are not like out of this world. But what happens is that those companies are willing to invest into them to get them to that point where they're really gonna be good. Look up some of the, the stories that you see online, right? I, I, I like to do my research. I don't come here and talk to you guys without doing research. There's guys that show up to these companies not knowing anything, right? But they have such a, a good resume as far as like, you know, uh, schools, education, their background, right? They come up with all of these things. They pass the interview, okay? They pass the interview, which is a, another process, okay? So it's something that they train themselves. It's almost like a, a five to 10 year journey. Anybody that comes here and tells you, hey, I just showed up at Google and they hired me out of nowhere. That's not really the full story. The full story is there's a background about you, right? There's something that you did from years ago. It could be you were studying math. You could study science. You've been doing that for years. They're seeing an individual and they're looking at him and they want to invest into him. They know they got to train him. They know they got to teach him a lot of stuff. Right? Some of you guys are more prepared than a lot of guys that are working at Google right now. A lot of guys that are working at Facebook right now, you guys are more prepared than them. But it's a journey that they, they had to go through. Those guys had to go through. You get what I'm saying? So just because you are maybe more prepared than somebody, right? you can't discredit their journey. You need to start creating your own journey because you just started learning how to code a few months ago. Now it's time for you to actually go out there and go hard. You get what I'm saying? So stop feeling entitled and stop feeling like people owe you something when they don't. You have to prove it. You can't just show up and say, I was a janitor for six months ago, and then out of nowhere say, hey, I learned how to code online, now I'm a developer, pay me $100,000. It doesn't work like that. Life is not perfect. So like I said, guys, you guys definitely need to, you know, be more grounded. You know, take those opportunities, even though they might not be what you might be expecting. You wanted a, a crazy job, which is giving you $100,000. You get free laundry, you get all this stuff. Bro, you got to work yourself up just like in any other job. Now, the first thing that you need to make sure that you have is a nice portfolio, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you guys with a playlist and a couple of videos here so you guys can continue and go there, guys. Definitely go check out the portfolio reviews that I'll be doing because you're going to learn a lot. This is going to help you get that first job and might even, you know, give you an extra boost, an extra $10,000, $20,000 just because you have a nicer portfolio than everybody else. It is what it is. I'll see you guys there.